Hey, how are you doing? My name is Shu. Today, I want to share with you some of the rules I found useful when I'm making notes for studying and writing. Of course, you don't really need any rule to take notes to begin with, but I find it helpful to have a few ground rules to maintain consistency across notes and build an efficient second brain. So if you find the idea of having principles or rules too restricting, you don't need to have them at all. But if you're like me, it might be useful to have them written down. The first principle I have for my note taking system is to capture your fleeting thoughts as much as you can. This is not because you have lots of great ideas. In fact, 90% of your ideas are useless or garbage, at least that's the case for me. But they do take up some space in your mind. By writing them down, you can capture them into a note, thereby you can free up your mental space, which helps you concentrate and think better. And as a bonus, you get to record your good ideas, which are probably about like 5 to 10% of your thoughts. So capture your ideas in your note app even if you think your ideas are silly. Also, another reason why it's important to write down your thoughts is that writing is the thinking process. You can't really think it through ideas until they are out of your head and they are on a piece of paper. Then you can start making sense of them. This is a little related to the first principle, but you want to make the process of capturing your thoughts into your notes as smooth as possible. That means you want to remove all the potential friction in the process, otherwise you might forget your ideas or it just feels too cumbersome to write them down. So how do we make it frictionless. The primary obstacle in this process is the speed of the tool you use. If your note app is slow, it's going to discourage you from writing your thoughts. If you have to wait for more than 10 seconds every time you want to write, you eventually stop wanting to do that anymore. That was actually my biggest issue with apps like um, Notion and uh, Rome. And the second biggest obstacle is having to make decisions when writing your thoughts. For example, do you remember Evernote? It used to be popular, but I don't know what happened to it. But when you make a note in Evernote, you have to make a few decisions, such as which folder do I put this note and what title should I give this note? All of these questions require you to use unnecessary mental energy and cause lots of friction. And this is exactly why the idea of daily notes is genius, because that's where you can write your thoughts without these frictions. Since your daily note is where all of your thoughts can live, regardless of their category and genre, you don't have to make any decision when making a new note. All you have to do is just write it down. So my second principle is to pick a tool that's fast and use daily note for every idea to make it frictionless. The third principle is maximize the number of portals in each note. So the problem I had with many note apps I used before was that they all turn into an idea black hole. It means you make a note but never actually use them or even see them again because they get buried under a pile of other notes. I used to use Evernote when I was in university. I took notes from lectures but I don't remember actually reviewing the notes ever again. Of course that's not the only point of taking notes but it's a shame that you don't ever use the notes you made. One of the reasons why this happens is that each note is isolated because they are not connected to other notes with links. These are called author notes and it's very likely we forget about them eventually. But if a note contains many portals into other notes like links and tags, we can increase the likelihood of discovering that note again. It's similar to Wikipedia. Each page contains many links which are portals into other pages. This helps you discover other ideas and connections. So ideally, you want to build something similar. Instead of a bunch of author notes, you want to build a web of notes. In order to do that, you simply need to include links to relevant notes and tags for every note you make. A trick that makes this process easier is to ask yourself this question. When do I want to see this note? For example, if I'm making a note about creating content, I'd ask myself the question and assign links and tags like passion and economy, solopreneur, how to become a creator, and so on. Because I want to discover this note when I'm writing about these topics. And if you can't think of these keywords, you can just put a review tag so you can revisit this note again when you have free time. So try to include as many portals so you have no author notes. 
Another principle that I think is critical is to resurface your old notes regularly. This is related to the last principle. Even if you include many links and tags in your notes, they can get buried under other notes and never come back again. To prevent this, we can use the space repetition system to resurface the buried notes to the top. This way, you can create a kind of circulation inside your knowledge base where you can review the existing notes so you can develop them further or archive them if they are not important anymore. Some new note apps such as Remnote, Obsidian and uh, Logseek already have the space repetition system. You can just assign the space repetition tag to the notes you want to resurface later, then review them regularly. And each time you do, you can write incrementally and change the frequency you want to review them if you like. Finally, something that I like to do is to include mental anchors in my notes. Mental anchors are things that make it easier for you to remember what you wrote and find the notes you're looking for. The primary mental anchor for me is time. I find it helpful to include it when I write things down because we use time to remember almost everything. This is why I love interstitial journaling because it lets you see your thoughts in the context of time, which makes it easier to remember what you wrote. If you want to know more about interstitial journaling, check out this video to learn how to do it. Alright, thanks for watching. That was a list of my note-taking principles. See you in the next video. Bye!